Winter on the homestead is a test. It reveals how well we performed over the growing season, the quality of our food preservation, and if our prioritization of time and effort has been appropriate. If we have done a good job, winter can be better than any vacation. If we have not, winter is mostly suffering. In a way, homesteading in a temperate climate is all about winter. From the moment we start sourcing seeds and planting the spring garden, we are preparing for winter. How many potatoes will we eat? How many tomato vines are required to still have salsa, barbecue sauce, and marinara through the following spring? How are we going to provide for the livestock? And how many are we going to feed and water when it stays below freezing for days at a time? How we answer these questions determines our quality of life. In a modern world defined by convenience, the sort of long game thinking required to fill the larder is no longer innate in most people. Utility taps, grocery stores stocked with asparagus in January, and everything on demand delivery services narrow our focus to just this moment. We have been lulled into a mindset of instant gratification and have lost our ability to think into the future. Homesteading reignites our thinking and rebuilds our ability to solve problems on grand scales of time and resource management. By returning to the natural world for our survival needs, we restore meaning to all the things we require and enjoy. The ease of acquisition is inversely proportionate to value in many ways. Sure, you can order a pound of bacon through an app on your phone and have it delivered to your door within the hour. But it's going to be a cartoon of what bacon can be. Bacon made from the pig you raised, slaughtered, butchered, cured, and smoked with the fruit wood pruned from your own orchards can't be compared to the pre-sliced, GMO corn-fed, indoor confinement, plastic packaged garbage on offer in the default economy. This is true of everything produced on your homestead, provided you have developed the skills necessary to achieve quality. Minimize livestock and move them close to the house. By having everyone close in, we can keep an eye on them and optimize chore workflow. Our cows are right behind the cottage along the creek. In this location, they have plenty of fresh water, and by feeding them in one spot, I develop a mat of manure and hay leavings. In the spring, I will gather this with the tractor and build compost piles for use in future gardens. Our large black old spot gilt failed the farrow this year and will soon evolve into bacon. To fill her role in the system, we picked up these two rascals from our dear friends at Down Home Farm. By keeping both chickens and pigs at all times, we always have a way to elevate any waste products on the farm. With the garden sleeping, we cut the laying flock loose to cultivate, eat dormant bugs, and fertilize. They clean up after the pigs and help break parasite cycles. Stay ahead of feed needs. Waiting until the last minute to restock feed can come around and bite you. Rough weather, a tractor that refuses to start, or other emergencies can leave you holding an empty grain sack. When the weather is good, stock up on everything. Though I wish I was that guy who had two years worth of firewood stacked in a woodshed, I certainly am not. With an abundance of down timber on the property, I tend to cut as I go in the winter. Again, I don't let the wood pile get too low before reloading. I'd hate to run out in a blizzard when I can't get the tractor into the woods. If the saw breaks down, do I have enough wood to last until I can fix it? There is also illness and injury to consider. If you're down with a cold or your back goes out, the last thing you want to do is fix wood. If your family relies on wood heat and on you to get it, stay as far ahead as you can. The further ahead you are, the more discretion you have with regard to timing. I'll cut and split when the sun is shining, thank you very much. Work on your relationships. Being holed up with the family around the stove can be joy or torture. Winter is a good time to strengthen bonds with loved ones, but can also find us edgy and combative. Make sure to allow for everyone's space and do not take up too much yourself. I find that adopting an attitude of service is helpful. Winter is time to feed your mind, read, learn a new skill, enjoy your hobbies. 
The warm season is about the body. The cold season is about the mind. While your body heals from long days of hard labor, feed your mind with something good. Give yourself permission to rest, nap, stretch, meditate. With us on the schedule, we can take time to have brunch at 11 on a Thursday or turn in early on Saturday night. Homesteaders are driven, and taking responsibility for everything can create a pattern of constant motion. By allowing ourselves to be still, we clear the mind and refresh our perspectives and stress levels. Get out into the cold. Prune trees. Hunt your region for seeds and propagation cuttings. Walk your property to see what lies below the foliage. Read animal signs and observe the patterns of frost movement. Watch the sunset and Orion rise. Make a bonfire. Challenging your mitochondria to regulate your core temperature is healthy. Coming in from the cold to a toasty home is the best. Socialize and scheme. It's hard to make time for friends during the rush of the growing season. Winter offers a chance to get together, trade seeds, plan community breeding lines, go in on large tree orders, make music, share knowledge and experience. The most powerful information may come from something your neighbor says in passing. Scrambling in the winter is a leading cause of homesteader burnout. By designing for a quiet winter and taking advantage of the opportunity to rest, everything we do will be better. Winter should be like dessert for the homesteader. It is the time to put on a few pounds, dream of a better future, and improve our knowledge. Winter is our reward for all we have done during the rest of the year. I encourage you to fill the cellars and freezers and give yourself permission to luxuriate in the bounty.